What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got kind of an odd discussion video to share with you guys. I would like to directly compare zero tolerance knives with Wii knives. Uh, why do I want to do that? Because, I mean, I suppose to make this initial part of the video short is uh, I, I feel like Wii knives is in a uh, an area in the knife world where they are making knives with the exact same quality quality arguably better than zero tolerance some people would argue that um and for roughly you know very very comparable prices very competitive prices in a lot of ways we is doing what i wish zt was doing you guys know i'm a big zt fan i'm a zt supporter but i don't agree necessarily with where they've been going here uh in 2019 2020 i kind of like zt from 2014 up to about 2017 they made some of my favorite models in that time period and uh i just i wish that they you know they've got the manufacturing down they've got the quality materials down they've got the competitive pricing down it's just the designs aren't super great so i'd like to compare them with a company like we who's getting everything all of the above right including the designs now in uh you know back then zero tolerance by the way, Zero Tolerance today is being represented by the beloved ZT0452CF. Let me make sure I got that model number right because something that we and ZT both do that is ridiculous is all of their <laughs> models are numbers. And we is being represented by my very, my very one of my new favorites, um, the uh, Off-Grid Knives Scorpion. And um, I've had to explain this once before. Um, it was designed by off-grid knives, but it was manufactured by Wii and is exactly the same quality, same tolerances, same, I mean, made in the exact same place as any Wii knife with the Wii stamp on it. It's just got an off-grid stamp on it. So this is, you know, this is a Wii knife. Two knives that are very similar, using very similar materials. Some materials are in a different place. They're both long, slender, you know, S35VN blades. Very, very similar and very, very similar when it comes to price. A little bit different, but... I think two knives that represent well. I think it's important to remember that uh, companies like Riot, Bestec, uh, and a bunch of others now that kind of followed after we broke that negative stigma of Chinese manufacturing knives and, and high-end Chinese manufactured knives, right? They, they kind of uh, blew that away. And when did they start to hit the scene? 2015, 2016, something like that, right? Um a lot of different um, high-end Chinese OEMs could be rotated in with Wii, but in my opinion, Wii is kind of doing things the most consistently, right? They come out with models that people like visually, that are made well, that are made with premium materials, and have very competitive prices. All of these things together, very consistently. Riot does that, but their prices are a little bit higher. Best X getting there, but they're not quite as good as we, right? There's a lot of other companies that are kind of missing one element or the other. So that's why I feel like these two are good comparisons. By the way, you can find both of these knives along with many others by simply opening the description in any of my videos, including the one that you're watching right now. And it'll take you directly to my Amazon store where I have uh, collected my most recommended knives, my favorite budget knives, and a whole bunch of other stuff, including specifically Wii knives and ZT knives. You can actually see right there is my ZT category, and a little bit further down is my Wii category. So if you're looking to browse for knives like this or these knives specifically or whatever, there are so many knives in there. So please check that out. All right. So anyways, um, we are looking at... Um, essentially, I mean, the reason I chose these two is we're, we're looking at basically the same thickness here, 145 to 150 thousandths long slender drop point blade, or, you know, you could call this, um, reverse tanto, whatever, uh, tumbled with satin flats. This one's satin all the way through. We're looking at a carbon fiber front scale and a titanium rear scale, right? But if you guys remember, um, the, uh, sprint run of the ZT0452, there was in fact, at one time, a full titanium version of this that was using, um, CPM S35VN that ran for a little bit less than this, right? It was about the same price as the, um, uh, the off-grid um, Scorpion here. For pricing, check the check the store because it changes all the time. And I know that the 0452 at some point is going to be discontinued like all of the other amazing models from ZT, which is why I'm trying to think of people in the future. You know, prices will be updated on that store automatically so you can check there. Both of these knives have very similar feeling detents and lockup. We have a very um, similar construction here utilizing the... Um, a flipper tab breaks a medium heavy detent and then locks out up against a 
stop pin, right? It's the same thing here. Um, very, very similar. It's actually using the weight and mass of the blade, you know, the length. What I'm getting at here is both of these companies have gotten down the flipping action and detent thing. And the funny thing is, is that for the long time, for a long time, the term uh, flips like a ZT was like, oh, oh, so it's got a good flipping action, right? I remember when flipping action, well, and I say that like I've been around for so long. I remember four years ago when getting, you know, great flipping action was actually a really big deal on uh, these, these, you know, regular high-end production knives, not necessarily knives that were, you know, much higher in price, I mean, even they weren't getting it exactly right. But Zero Tolerance had it down and not a lot of other companies did. And so we comes along and they're like, hey, we use titanium and carbon fiber, but we kind of go a little bit beyond and add some extra finishes, some, some anodizing colors. Sometimes we even inlay the carbon fiber, right? We'll charge you a little bit less and we'll offer you that same flipping action. And people were hesitant at first, right? Okay, what's the catch here, right? And if you guys remember, the, the thing that people complained about was uh, we used to use um, some proprietary hardware that was like star-shaped and that's pretty much like that was the majority of what people complained about. They had some wonky designs to start out with, right? They had a little bit of a rocky start, but people were still like, wow, this is this is legit, right? We've got all these different, and they're offering like multiple different um, anodizing colors for the same model. Um, they, they pack extra hardware into the packages. They're using S35VN, they're using M390. Wow, you know? And uh, ZT, turn, including myself, uh, I'm sorry, we turned a lot of people from this whole idea that you, you know, in order to get a truly uh, precision made, a truly quality high-end production knife, you had to buy, you know, uh, US made, right? And uh, we just broke that. And, you know, I, I'm, I am at the point now where it's like, if I have the option, I will buy US, you know? Um, I have purchased through Wii before and um, I love their knives, but because I'm from the US, it makes me want zero tolerance to keep the same level of uh, fit and finish, keep the same you know, uh, competitive pricing, keep the same materials, but I want them to get the designs right. You know, um, Wii Knives does a lot of different collaborative things. You know, obviously like we're looking at right here, we're looking at off-grid knives, right? Off-grid designed it, Wii manufactured it. Um, but they also, we have some in-house designs too. And it seems like we does a better job of either teaming up with custom makers who have great design ideas, um, or they have great in-house designs. Now that's not to say that we knives hasn't made some freaking weird stuff in, in, in all honesty, the reason it seems like we's designs are so much better. That's, I mean, ZT's had some interesting designs here in the last few years. They've also had, had a lot of duds, in my opinion. But um, we is able to essentially manufacture a lot more at the same time, right? So they're actually, I mean, year by year, they're putting out, it seems like 10 times more models than ZT. So the stuff that's not that appealing, it kind of just, uh, okay, well, that didn't work out. And then it's like, but check out these other 10 that we just came out with last week, right? And they come in 10 different colors and they've got different tiers because we put shred carbon fiber on it or we put stone wash, we put the satin finish or what, we got a compound version of it, right? They have so many different variants of so many different models that they're able to, you know, take 10 different swings at the same nail and they only have to hit it once. ZT's like, here's some stuff we've been working on. I hope you like it, uh, you know? And it's just kind of unfortunate that that is that way. But um, I, I have hope. I've seen ZT's new, more return to your roots type model, right? Like that. Um, and uh, it looks like maybe they're listening. Um, anybody who has not seen my video about the top, I think it was my top 10 or top 15 favorite ZT knives, I urge you to check that out because I feel like a lot of people are going to agree with me that some of their most popular models were all some of the, it's, it was during the time period where zero tolerance was transitioning out of the, you know, let's put all of our cards into ultra heavy duty looking crazy, like overbuilt, right? They were doing that for a little bit and they started to transition. They kept that theme, 
but it was more modern, more refined. You know, the ZT0562, of course, the ZT0920. Uh, I love, actually, really like the Emerson ZT0640. I just, you know, the green carbon fiber didn't take too well with people. Um, anything in the hinderer line, um, but uh, there was some of those heavier, more overbuilt feeling models, right? Just kind of with the refinement. And that's essentially, that's exactly why I love this off-grid Scorpion so much because it has that feeling, right? It's got not unreasonably thick titanium, but titanium that feels solid, right? It's got a big blade, but it's not like, the, it's not super tall, right? Like the, uh, is it the 0303? <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's that, those are cool, but it's just too big. You know, people want function, but they don't. What what I think we're finding out, or at least this is my perspective, and my I, my perspective could be isolated. What I've discovered is that zero tolerance tried to go too much into you know ultra precision, ultra grab your attention with very wild aesthetic looks, and they they went towards like the 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 people who were wanting less of a tool that they could really take out and beat on and more of something that just was like look how cool this little you know thing is that's in my pocket that's it it happens to be made out of a lot of carbon fiber titanium and 20 cv but it takes the form of something that's like well yeah it cuts all this other stuff is kind of unnecessary right in a knife like this or something a little bit smaller you know you still get a full fully usable knife but at the same time, one that, you know, and I mean fully usable, like one that you could take out, you know, camping, hunting, you know, or like for me, I, I EDC this in my office today because of the way that it carries, right? Um, it's very, very practical, very functional, but at the same time, um, it, you get to enjoy some of those more premium elements. They, they mix it together well, right? And that's the same thing what we're getting here in the ZT0452CF right? You get a big, aggressive folding knife that you can undoubtedly use in a number of different circumstances, right? But because of the way it's constructed, it's still fairly lightweight, especially considering how much blade you get. And it carries deep enough to where if I really wanted to carry this in my pocket, I'm telling you, what it looks like from the outside is that I'm carrying some little, you know, thing that's not super scary. And um, that's, uh, that's, in my opinion, that's good. Now, I'm, I'm getting really specific on my thoughts on this, you know, and I, when I do these discussion videos, it's it's more of a discussion with myself. There's nobody really here to object with me, you know, or object to me, you know, and give me their thoughts and things. I kind of depend on you guys in the comments section afterwards. But I feel like um, I feel like you guys might agree with me that like um, some of my favorite knives that uh, we has done was uh, it was was it the the Archbishop 2.0 where they collaborated with Ferrum Forge. Um, and then uh, the the actual Wee Bishop was a fantastic knife. Um, all models and design, those two models and designs are, are something like this. Um, and there's there's countless others that remind me of some, you know like ZT's direction two three four years ago. But we did it, you know. And sometimes it was an in-house design, sometimes it was a collaboration. But you know. These, these uh, straightforward, functional, yet classy and robust looking and feeling designs are very, very popular. And that's what we knew ZT for. And I suppose my main point to all this is that while ZT is trying to go in a direction, you know, in a different direction and experiment with some different things, we is proving that those types of designs that Zero Tolerance used to be, you know, ha ha have plentiful supply of, Right, it was like every other design, or like seventy percent of their designs were like that. We is proving that they are still extremely popular. They are in high demand. Right, that seven point seven five to nine inch range, a full size knife, titanium frame lock with different, you know, varying levels of more or less titanium and carbon fiber in different places, and then contouring, and you got twenty CV or S thirty five VN. Right. People will still want that, right? Um, and I, I mean, honestly, the very first, you know, Z design that ZT comes out with that is more just returning to that basic, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily have to fix something that isn't broken, right? People still like this. And this thing, this model is old. People still like the 0562 and it's old. I still recommend it. The 0562 is still one of my most recommendable knives ever. 
And it's been around for, I got my first one in 2014. That was six years ago. <laughs> so yeah, there's still, I mean, people still want that. And there's gonna be refinement, there's gonna be this or that, but you know, it's like, I've always thought that Zero Tolerance not only had a problem with, you know, the, the types of models that they released, but I'll bring this up again, I talk about it all the time, the ZT0393 I think could have been a much bigger uh, deal. They just they discontinued everything. At the time of this video, all of the different variants are discontinued except for the glow into the dark carbon fiber scale one, the 0393 GLCF. Um, if they had, the very first version of that knife, I, I mean it's based on the Eclipse and I loved it because it was a hinder design, I'm a huge hinder nut, but they released it with the blue titanium uh, frame, the blue anodized titanium frame, and then it had a two-tone black and satin blade. And then it had the weird Hinder Maximus G10 overlay. Too much weird going on there. Too much for it being a standard production knife. Eventually, after uh, whatever the, uh, if Ricky's watching this video, he's gonna make fun of me because I always have to ask him. Some uh, aftermarket custom company uh, stripped the anno off of the, uh, the, the ZT0393. They got rid of the black part of the blade and they tumbled it and they made it a more simple and subdued, like these knives here, black and gray with tumbled or, and or satin finish. You know, a safe, neutral color setup. And everybody was like, wow, cool. So then ZT releases a sprint run of the 0393 that's, guess what? Tumbled titanium, black G10 overlay, and a tumbled S35 VN blade. And everybody, including me, was like, yeah, this is what you should have done initially, and then release the weird version in the sprint run. ZT has this weird way of making the initial version of the knife something that looks like a sprint run. So it only caters to certain people. Um, I, I, you know, I get that they're trying to do different things. And again, I don't know how to run a company. I couldn't run ZT. So what I'm saying here could be complete nonsense. And there might be more rhyme and reason to their method than I'm picking up on, right? I want to admit that. But doesn't it seem like every other company's way of doing this is release a basic version of the knife first, right? I mean, obviously you need a good design. You need a good design first. You can't just throw something out there that like the little tiny... What was that little tiny ZT knife that just, it looked like a, a little tiny Raptor Talon. It was like a, it was way too expensive and it was just, it was pure pocket jewelry. Not coming down on anybody who likes that. But anyways, you start out with a design that's not that, something more ZT052-esque, right? Something that's clearly, it's made for the human hand, has a blade that's ground for cutting, and it still has the excess, right? The overbuilt looking nature, the overbuilt filling nature, the, you know, the pomp and frill of the carbon fiber or the shiny titanium, whatever. But you release it in a very standard generic form that people can, you know, a, a wider range of people can be interested in, right? And then if people bite, you go, you like that? Check out this purple one with flames and crap all over it. Not really, but you know what I mean? Like the RJ Martin thing, it came out in gold titanium first and then and then they had like purple and blue and it's like don't make sprints and then more basic versions. Don't make sprints as the standard standard version and then more uh, uh, basic versions as the sprint, right? It's just it just seemed like a mess, you know. Um, I I I hope people kind of get what I'm what I'm going at here. I think a better um, you know one of their more successful knives that they did correctly. I think the very, the most recent one that I think was done correctly by ZT was the ZT0920. That was the Les George, uh, the one that was based on the Les George Harpy. Now, sadly, that's discontinued, but its standard version was contoured micro textured titanium, beautiful handle. Then it had this big sort of scimitar recurve looking blade, trailing point blade, whatever you want to call it. I don't know exactly what you wanted to call it. It's like 8.75 to 9 inches, maybe a little longer. Big ol' awesome thing, right? The only thing people didn't like were the shape and the anodization of the pocket clip and the standoffs. The standoffs were gear pattern, the pocket clip was this weird thing, but they were anodized bronze. It just was weird and out of place. But the rest of the knife was pretty darn good, right? You could, I mean, a lot of people would give that, still give it a good, a solid A. And then they had some sprint runs. They had the Tiger Stripe, um, a version of it with the bronze scales and then they had the blue anodized version of it with the black blade. There you go. That's good. But 
it you know there was already a lack of attention on ZT in the first place and you know I, I think their involvement with Les George just kind of petered out I, I'm guessing but that that was done you know in my opinion that was done correctly now like I said this may or may not this may be more or less applicable to uh, the the proper strategy here because I'm just I'm just talking I'm literally just a guy who handles knives and talks into a camera and gives his thought and wants ZT to be better than it currently is you know and I still have faith but I you know I don't think there's any shame if I was ZT let's pretend ZT's one person and we's one person I don't think there's any shame in going yeah, it seems like the way that Wii's doing things is it's working out for them. Maybe I should not copy their designs, not copy their, you know, their execution of the final product, but keep our own specific ZT-esque nature, but just sort of do the same model. Because after all, we were, we, we did have a similar model to begin with. We just can't put things out in such vast quantities. And I feel like people will come back to it. But as of right now, since this is sort of a comparison between the two companies, as of right now, I gotta tell you guys, I mean, I love that Zero Tolerance Knives are made in the United States, but we is just, just really, really winning right now. I mean, I, I love this Scorpion. I love it. I mean, off-grid knife, I'm saying we, <laughs> I should give a lot more credit to, um, to off-grid knives. You guys should check them out. This. The off-grid Scorpion, by the way, is listed in my most recommended knives, absolutely. Uh, they did design this knife and we manufactured it for them. So if you have not checked out off-grid knives, you absolutely should. They were kind enough to send this guy along. So all due credit to off-grid knives. But as far as Wii's selection process go and their, manu their, their manufacturing uh, skill and precision goes, I mean, yeah, I got to hand it to Wii. They just really are knocking it out of the park right now. And this is coming from somebody who originally was like, I will never spend that much money on a knife that was manufactured in China. There's no way it can be as good as my beloved USA made zero tolerance knives. I was wrong and I am happy to be proven wrong. Um, I, uh, I, I, I want this essentially to uh, culminate into an event that, you know, where ZT starts making better designs. Um, I think everything else with their company is fine. I just want, I want the old ZT back. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this is a super ranty, ravey episode, but I don't know, I don't know if you guys got anything out of this or if you were even entertained by it, but I, I hope that you, I hope that you are at least entertained by it, as I always say, but I think that's just about it, that's all I can say. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, if you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out, and if you enjoy all my content, Go ahead and click on this middle complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.